The BBC's Panorama programme has uncovered evidence that soldiers from a secret unit used by the British Army in Northern Ireland in the early 1970s shot unarmed civilians. The military reaction force operated at the height of what's often called the Troubles, a time of violent conflict between Catholic and Protestant communities, which saw rioting, terrorist shootings and bombings on an unprecedented scale. Speaking publicly for the first time, the unit's members say they believe they saved many lives. Britain's Ministry of Defence says admissions by the soldiers that they sometimes operated beyond the law will be referred to the police. John Ware reports. In 1972, Belfast was one of the most dangerous places on earth. There were multiple bombings and shootings almost daily. The military reaction force was a small secret unit set up by the army to take the war to the IRA. Now, a panorama investigation shows how some in the unit operated outside the law and shot unarmed civilians. The 40-strong MRF patrolled the heartland of the IRA, West Belfast, in unmarked cars. Three former members of the unit agreed to appear on camera, provided their identities were disguised. What was the mission, as you understood it? To draw out the IRA and to minimise their activities. Minimise their activities? Yes. In what way? Well, if they needed shooting, they'd be shot. We were not there to act like an army unit. We were there to act like a terror group. MRF operational records have been destroyed and the soldiers we've interviewed have avoided incriminating themselves or their comrades. What is clear, though, is that in 1972, some plainclothes soldiers thought it acceptable to shoot unarmed people. One member explained how they sometimes approached barricades manned by nationalists to deter loyalist incursions. But are you saying to me that on occasions the MRF would make an assumption that someone had a weapon, even if you couldn't see one? Occasionally. And they would get shot? Occasionally. Some people would say that's murder. No. In fact, I think it's most people would say that's murder. Possible. I wouldn't say that. The soldiers admit they operated outside the rules of engagement. The army's yellow card prohibited firing unless lives were in immediate danger. There were strict rules as regards the yellow so you card. You knew the rules of the yellow card. Oh yeah, I knew the rules of the yellow card inside out. But it didn't um, apply to the MRF. No. I just want to be clear about where the red line was, as it were. I think it's a fuzzy red line. The MRF was wound up after about 18 months. The soldiers say their contribution to the fight against the IRA has never been recognised. The Minister of Defence has told the BBC it's referred allegations that some MRF soldiers shot unarmed civilians to the police in Northern Ireland. But yesterday, the Northern Ireland Attorney General proposed there should be no more prosecutions or inquiries into conflict-related killings. This could mean the end of the historical inquiries team, who've been reviewing such cases for the last seven years. But 40 years on, some relatives are still seeking answers. John Ware, BBC News. Well, now one of our top stories, an investigation by the BBC's Panorama programme has uncovered evidence that British soldiers from an undercover unit shot unarmed civilians. That was at the height of the Northern Ireland conflict 40 years ago. We can speak now to Colonel Richard Kemp, who undertook eight tours of duty in Northern Ireland, including running the successor to the military reaction force. He then went on to become the commander of the British forces in Afghanistan between 2003 and 2006. He joins us now via Skype. Thanks very much for speaking to us today. Um, what is your reaction to what uh, we seem to be learning from this Panorama programme? Uh, and what's your reaction to the allegations? Well, I think um, I, I would take treat it with caution initially. I think we have to remember that... Uh, I, well, I think we should wonder whether the soldiers that are making statements um, are actually saying they themselves killed unarmed civilians or they saw unarmed civilians killed, or, or is it simply they heard stories of it? In other words, maybe just sort of bravado spoken between people in a very, um, you know, stressful job. And that, that may be the case. It may be the case that there were actually unarmed people killed. I don't know. But I, I don't uh, immediately take it on face value. I do think that um, clearly if there were people who were killed who should not have been killed because they were not involved in terrorism, not armed, then 
that, you know, if, if further evidence is coming to light, there needs to be an investigation. And if necessary, prosecutions against the soldiers need to be brought. I see you, you have said that there, there, this is obviously a grey area. There are situations where perhaps someone was armed when they were fired on, but then the, the weapon is secretly uh, removed. I mean, are there situations which you have approved or that you know about where, where the issue wasn't clear? Absolutely. Many cases that I've personally been involved in and that I'm well aware of where uh, everything was blurred. And normally things are blurred. And when you're in a contact situation in a country in a, in a war like Northern Ireland where the enemy is moving around in among a civilian population dressed as civilians, it's very easy to, to lose control of what's happening and to not really understand what's happening. It, it's easy, easy for maybe for the wrong people to get shot sometimes. And actually, I'm surprised that, uh, that not more people were, 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 that more people were not killed who, who should not have been um, in, in the confusion of events. So, yeah, very rare, very difficult. And, and as you say, sometimes a soldier would, would shoot a, an armed terrorist and the weapon would mi mysteriously disappear. I think these, these people in the MRF uh, and their successors in the various covert and special forces and intelligence units that followed were very, very brave men working in extremely dangerous circumstances, effectively in a war situation in 1972, where, let's not forget, 500 people were killed in that small province of Northern Ireland in just that one year. And the actions of these men and their successors in the, intel in the military and the police intelligence eventually, of course, led to the, the comprehensive intelligence penetration of the R IRA, their defeat, and, and their coming to the negotiating table. So it, there may have been mistakes made, there may have been crimes committed, but, but okay. they, they okay. nevertheless provide a very valuable role. Sorry to butt in. Colonel Richard Kemp, many thanks. Thank you.